some people don't like the Phantom Menace. They have their reasons. With the taxation of trade routes. What are midichlorians? But one of the big ones was this guy. This is, you, you, come on, you guys know who this is. Lisa Jaja Binks. And ever since that movie came out, it seems like one question pops up over and over and over again. Is Jar Jar Binks racist? No, he's not. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Let's ask a more interesting question. Why is Jar Jar Binks even in this movie? My no, no. Well, there's a lot of reasons, and we'll get into some of those, but here's an important piece of backstory. A few years ago, George Lucas revealed something that not many people realize, that Walt Disney's Goofy was actually the inspiration for Jar Jar Binks. And yeah, Jar Jar's basically just an orange squeaky Goofy, which isn't really surprising. Star Wars has always taken inspiration from all kinds of other sources, and it just sort of makes sense that Lucas would begin building a character who would become animation's future by looking deep into animation's past. Which brings us to one of the most controversial questions George Lucas ever asked. What if Goofy was the hero of Star Wars? That wouldn't be necessary. Because in case you didn't get the memo, Jar Jar is the hero of the Phantom Menace. No, he's not the main protagonist, or the other main protagonist. And yes, there is a scene where he steps into a pile of banta crap. Oh. But despite all of that, he's the character who solves the problem of the movie. Jar Jar Binks. Isa, your highness? Yes, I need your help. So, the answer to our question, why is Jar Jar Binks even in this movie, is Jar Jar Binks is in this movie to save everyone. Here's the story of the Phantom Menace. And don't worry, I timed it. It only takes 45 seconds. The Trade Federation blockades the peaceful planet of Naboo and imprisons its young ruler, Queen Amidala, our major protagonist. She decides to call upon the Imperial Senate for backup. Two Jedi help her carve through the blockade in order to get there. And after a pit stop on Tatooine where they pick up a mysterious slave boy, Amidala pleads her case before the Senate body. But it doesn't work. Amidala didn't realize that in the Senate, the Trade Federation has all the power. Now things are worse than they were before. Amidala has taken herself halfway across the galaxy, leaving her people leaderless. But then something happens that nobody could anticipate. Not even the man orchestrating all this from behind the scenes. This is an unexpected move for her. Jar Jar speaks up. Gungan's not dying without a fight. We say warriors. We say got a grand army. Now, Jar Jar has been speaking up almost constantly up to this point. Excuse me, the beans here about? Call Wazy. Where are we so going? High word. It's easy to see that I'm at best and the team of animators at ILM were having a blast coming up with things for Jar Jar to do. They were sailing uncharted waters and their enthusiasm is all over the screen. Do they go too far? Should a few of Jar Jar's comic relief bits have been taken out in the edit? Huh? Eh, probably. Two or three. Jar Jar. Look, Jar Jar is supposed to be annoying. I mean, his name is Jar Jar. You know, like the rogue loner, Han Solo, or the pervy little alien, Salacious Crumb. Plus, let's just face it, Phantom Menace is more of an outright kids movie than any of the other Star Wars movies, which makes sense. It's the one with a kid in it. But he's a kid we don't meet until over a half hour into the movie. And that's another thing Jar Jar's there for. Jar Jar Binks gives kids a much needed viewpoint character for the parts of the movie that don't feature Anakin Skywalker. Oh, he's the guy's bomb bag. As blogger Rick Worley has pointed out, Jar Jar is an audience proxy character for children. He's confused and overwhelmed by the big events around him, as children would be. Power? When are you so thinking we so in trouble? And a lot of people don't see this. See, most people kind of feel the same way about Jar Jar that Obi-Wan does. What's this? Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Or that Captain Tarpulse does. No, oh, again, Jar Jar. You sir, go into the bosses. Or that Boss Nass does. He seemed to be punished. Or the way that literally everyone he knows feels about him. <laughs> Get the memo, Jar Jar. No one likes you. Well, except for Qui-Gon. This Gungan may be of help. But Qui-Gon is a character who's able to see value in the people he comes across that others may miss. Which is sort of the story of the Gungans in this movie. 
most of the people in the galaxy don't take them seriously. You're a Gungan, aren't you? We have taken over the last pockets of primitive life forms. This army appears to be made up of primitives. Why? Probably because they talk funny. And they don't have much experience of the galaxy outside of the swamps of Naboo. Or maybe the reason is a little closer to Jar Jar's own theory, that the Gungans are more dangerous than anybody really wants to admit. We said got a grand army. That's why you're not liking us, Mr. Dinks. There's no reason to think he's wrong. The Gungans don't really seem to be afraid of anybody. We are ready to do our part. You may notice the Naboo Senate pod doesn't even have any Gungans in it. An entire civilization with its own military power, technology, and culture exists on Naboo without any voice in the larger politics of the galaxy. That is, until Jar Jar speaks up which sets off a chain of events that results in his becoming a Bombard General, at least in the Buster Keaton sense, and eventually leads to the rescue of Naboo, peace between the surface dwellers and the swamp dwellers, and the Gungans taking their rightful seat alongside the rest of the Senate. While it lasts, anyway. <laughs> and Jar Jar does deserve a seat at the table. Even if he's annoying. Excuse me. Because when he's at the table, he reminds us that treating any person as if they have no value simply because they don't behave the way we expect them to, and they put their quirks on display for all of us to see, is to risk the doom of our entire civilization. Thanks for watching. There's definitely more where that came from. Subscribe if you want to know when the next one comes out, and until then, be easy. I wish that I could just wish away my feelings, but I can't.